Hey, YouTube. Screw Crawler. Hey, got another project here for you. All right. What is it? What do they get? And there she is. Simplicity Power Max 4040. So, here she is. It's a, uh, basically like a subcompact tractor built by Simplicity. Um, pretty cool tractors. Uh, as you can see, I got the motor tore out of this one. Uh, it's over there on the bench. It has been repowered once before, and I'm actually repowering it again, which is why I got the tore all apart um, with this motor over here. I actually found this Vanguard at a guy's house for 50 bucks, and it runs great. Um, it does have a little bit of crankshaft in play. I'm going to end up getting a new timing gear. Um, whatever accessory they had on it before was pulling hard on the, the crankshaft. So we'll just kind of start at the front, um, work our way back. You can see it's got dual or single hydraulic ports up front, space for duals. I'm going to try to find another dual set. Uh, come factory with these 10 inch wheels. Uh, somebody before me has put these ATV tires on it, which I'm going to find some smaller ones because. These ones touch the frame and deck at full turn. Uh, here you can see this goofy looking uh, hydraulic trans cooler. Um, it's a pretty cool accessory. I mean, how often do you see a hydrostat with a dedicated trans cooler on it? Um, here's our hydraulic controls. Um, it's actually got float, which is really nice uh, for running plows and snow blowers and stuff like that. Uh, the clutch is right here. And then it's got uh, dual brakes on this side. Now the brakes are up inside this axle tube here um, they don't work so I'm going to have to get them working you can see the rear hydraulic lines which that runs the rear three point which is cool as heck it's got self adjusters on both sides you can see there uh, and it's also got PTO that you can turn on and off with a switch on the dash right up there and let me see if I can get a it's got portals portal the the drop box like you know the axle comes out here and then there's a gear drops down gives you more ground clearance and uh, makes it easier on the transmission because there's more gear reduction clear out at the wheel end uh, rear tires are 29 by 12 5 on a 15 inch wheel um, the rear hydraulics and all that stuff work great um, it's got a couple extra lights like these and this yeah, so won't take all that crap off that crap but the rear fenders on this thing are just cool. They're like a big big farm tractor looking fenders. Uh, the hood for it, um, it's, it's hiding back there. It needs painted. Uh, somebody's primered it, so I'm going to give it a paint job before I throw it back on. Um, and then the hydrostatic controls are up here, uh, forward. And then, you know, you have to squeeze this in, which is kind of kind of cool and kind of annoying uh, to go in reverse and uh, pull it back. And then this cool, coolest thing I think about this tractor get this out of here, is it's got three ranges. So it's a full hydrostat, heavy duty hydrostat, and then it's got uh, three ranges. So it's got, you know, one, two, and three, all in this shifter over here. It's low, medium, and then high. So if you want to roll it around, you can just throw it right in neutral. Very handy. Um, so let's go over real quick why I pulled this engine off. So I bought this tractor running and driving, um, drove it on my trailer, drove it around the guy's yard a little bit. It ran okay, not great. Um, I thought it just needed a tune up. So I get it back home and you can see somebody's put a Harley Davidson coil on it because owning coils are hard to find and they're very expensive when you do. And then I, I ran the numbers on this motor. This isn't even the motor that's supposed to be on it. And um, this is actually off of John Deere. And I'm assuming that's why they cut the bottom part of the shroud out. See that big section that's missing. So who knows long, how long it's been running like that. And I'm sure it's not cooling very well. Um, the motor is quiet. Like it runs quiet. Like no nicks, no ticks, no you know knocking, nothing like that. But this carburetor, I don't know if you can see it here. Let's see if I can zoom in. There's a ton of play in the throttle shaft right here. Which I fixed that before uh, I guess you go down to the machine shop with my dad's and I bore this out and then put a bushing on either side of the throttle blade but it's kind of a process and then I figured carb it was pouring gas so the seat was bad so I started looking up all these parts and this air filter is bad and this is they only made this air filter for this particular model which is no big deal in and of itself I just went to got one of them little 
you know, universal style air filters. But by the time I added up all that stuff, plus adjusting the valves and blah, 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 and getting new engine tins, as you can see, somebody made these ones out of just, you know, galvanized sheet metal with some sheet metal screws. I mean, they did a nice job for what they had to work with, but I didn't want it that way. And I definitely didn't want this that way. So by the time I priced all that out, I was going to be two or 300 bucks deep in this engine. And I had that engine just sitting around waiting for something to put it on because I could not buy it for 50 bucks. So here we are. Um, I unbolted this one. I had to eat, this thing so freaking heavy. I had to use come along in the ceiling to get it out. And then I built this. See right here. Uh, this is a adapter. So I didn't have to drill any new holes in the frame, but really besides that, I wouldn't have mind drilling new holes. But um, this allows the center line to be in the same position as the Onan. The Onan is a much taller motor from the foot than the Briggs is. Um, I'm also losing a couple horsepower, but I think the, the 60 horse Briggs will do, do what I need to do just fine. Um, so that spaced it up so that I would have the proper clearance to be able to use factory belts on here and also to be able to use the belts that I wanted to on here. Um, kind of interesting setup here. So it's got the clutch. Um, when you push the clutch, it moves this up and so the belts disengage and then it has this which drives your PTO direct drive so you have to hook up both of them which will be kind of interesting but uh yeah I'm pretty excited about it that's going to be my just general use get firewood out with it um, make a back blade hopefully make a little back brush hog for it uh, get a snow plow for the front and get a snow blower well uh, that's the update on the Power Max 4040 um, yeah We'll uh, try to get it running here in the next couple days and uh, take your cruise on it.